How's it going, Reef Keepers? So today I'm going to try to at least not really tackle because I'm not an expert in this, but uh, at least discuss um, UV on reef tanks, which I have. I run UV. I know there's great debate in the hobby about the effectiveness of UV. You know, is it good? Is it bad? Should it be there? So uh, I don't have a quarantine system set up. I think if I had one more tank, my wife would lose it, even if it was empty most of the time. So um, I do get quarantined fish that are pre-quarantined from Dr. Reef, which I think is good practice. It's worth paying up for that service. I've never had a sick fish from him. Uh, however, I did add two clownfish that after I, the two clownfish you see in this tank, after I added them to the tank, I did notice some ick spots on them. So I know the ick exists in the tank. And so to address that, to make sure the ick was managed, I decided to practice ick management on my tank rather than prevention since it was already in and I was well underway with the tank and I got a UV sterilizer unit and I'll take you through that unit, but I just wanna kind of show you my fish as they're waiting for one of their five feedings of the day. Just show you how healthy these guys are. I've never, you know, since putting a UV sterilizer on the tank, I have never experienced one disease outbreak. So as far as I'm concerned from where I sit, it works, right? That's just, I mean, I might, I might be getting lucky, but from where I sit, it seems to work. So I'll show you my setup. My setup for UV sterilization is pretty much as, as minimal as you can get while still having a quote unquote, like legit amount of UV on the tank. So it's my understanding that 15 watts and above is what is gonna knock out parasites and sterilize them so that they do not reproduce in the tank. So I purchased a 15 watt aqua ultraviolet classic unit. And unfortunately, this unit, and this is one of the greatest struggles with UV, it's a little too long to fit horizontally back to front in here and I just couldn't find room to mount it this way. So I had to mount it vertically <laughs> in the um, pretty much otherwise worthless uh, ATO uh, container that comes standard with uh, the old water box sumps. So I'm glad I found use for that because I was literally just like storing random stuff in it before this. <laughs> but that's where the UV lives in my tank. And uh, I even couldn't, the cords are a problem with it too. The cords weren't quite proper to get it so that I could put that ballast in my electrical cabinet. So when you get a UV unit, either read the specs really close so you know, you know, like setting it up is hard. Know how big it is. They're not small. Um, try to make it easily accessible so that you can swap the bulb once a year, right? You have to swap that bulb once a year so that it remains effective. It, don't just put it on there, however, and then be like, oh, I'll figure it out later. These things suck. You have to have tubes connected to them for water flow. And, you know, you, you're you often zip tying things together and using brackets and it's a mess. So make it easy on yourself. And my recommendation would be, unless you have a ton of sump space, right? Like on the newer water box tanks, like this is just not enough sump space to have like a this UV just mounted up anywhere. Um, mount it on the outside of the tank, even behind the tank if you have the luxury of leaving your tank off the wall a few inches, it, it will make your life way easier, right? And regarding wattage, before I move on, just know that the more wattage you can get, the, the better the, the kill power, so to speak. So I know a few people who have like 57 watt UVs that they have mounted up on the side or on the back of their tank. Um, if you can do it, you know, do it. It's expensive and they're bulky and replacing the bulb obviously gets more expensive. However, I think that these things work and I think it's worth doing with a caveat. So, and this is my personal take on this. Um, a while back, I watched a Reef Builders episode where Salem Clemens talked about the biological wasteland that we artificially create in our reef tanks. And instead of plumbing the UV in line with my return line, 
which would mean that all water that comes through the sump must pass through UV. So basically maximum kill rate on any parasites or algae. Instead of doing that, I created what I would call a non-optimized UV setup. And by that, I mean that it's not fully optimized. It's not plumbed in. I have a little CJ pump that carries the water through this tube and in and then out a tube that dumps into my return section. That pump, I can't remember the gallons per hour on it, but I know that it's just less than the recommended gallons per hour for this unit. And that is a critical thing. When you're getting a UV unit, just understand it's not gonna come with a pump. It's not gonna come with a nice controllable DC pump or anything like that. It's, you're going to have to look at the flow rates. You're gonna to have to calculate, if you're plumbing it in line, how much, um, how much head height you've got. And you're gonna to have to get a pump that is at or below the rate that it calls for in its recommendations. If you move water through it too fast, the water's not gonna have enough exposure time as it travels past that powerful UV bulb for that UV bulb to have maximum effectiveness. Basically, things are gonna squeak through. You have to have long enough exposure time as it travels through the tube that you achieve the optimal kill rate for the things that you don't want to be living in your water. So, hence, it's part of the reason for my non-optimization, right, is that um, I just, uh, I wanted this little CJ pump that was like, you know, pretty low flow rate, it was cheap. That worked out for me, but also, as you can see, I like to let some biological diversity exist within my tank. I, I'm trying not to uh, push for a sterile tank necessarily. I want it sterile enough that these beautiful fish are not negatively impacted by like an ick outbreak but I don't want it so sterile that, you know, all these like, you know, filter feeders and ocean life that eventually propagates in your tank is just non-existent. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be at full optimization, just slaughtering the biological diversity in my tank, right? And constantly cleaning everything out and running crazy UV in line. Now look, there's different ways to approach this, right? Raj from Reef Builders would say, uh, I definitely want this as sterile as possible. It's not the real ocean anyway. And by the way, there are many experts that are like, yeah, you know, go full sterilization. Take out the, you know, the unknown, the factor of something building up population in your tank that could harm fish and corals and make your, may, may give you a headache. Um, and, and I respect and understand that position. It's just not my way. So the way I've got it, non-optimized with a simple cost-effective pump because I can only fit the smallest, you know, classic version of the Aqua Ultraviolet UV. I've got the 15 watt small version just tucked in here where I could fit it. And as you guys saw, I don't know what the fox face is doing right now, but my fish are very healthy. Uh, I guess it's just watching me right now. But uh, my fish are, my fish are healthy. I haven't had one outbreak, so I think it is worth the bare minimum, right? I would consider this pretty much the bare minimum for a 110 gallon reef system like what I've got here. Um, I would, I would definitely strongly consider, you know, after you get to a certain point of investment on your tanks, and if you know that, you know there are possible, you know, fish diseases in this tank. There are possible parasites floating around. Don't roll the dice again and again and again. And then one day you have a huge wipeout of all your beloved creatures. Just, you know, invest in something like that. I know it's easy for me to say it costs money, but from where I sit, I think it is worth it. I think my, my story with it has proven to me that there is some benefit to be had, even if you don't have the system fully optimized and built in line and some big 57 watt UV, enough to knock back the, just enough to knock back ick parasites, I think is, I think is appropriate for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, that's where I stand on it. But uh, no disrespect to anybody who disagrees or doesn't believe in UV or whatever. Um, so many different ways to do the hobby, right? But uh, this is my way, so I hope it was of value. All right, guys.
Hope you uh, have a good rest of your day.